Hello viewers, this is the second season of Yeah Buffy Talk Show and we are live at Paloma Hotel off Ring Road. Watch us on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. We'll go for a short commercial break. But before that I have a very nice gentleman here. And when we come back from the commercial break, I will introduce him to you. back from the commercial break and this is a Buffy talk show we are live at Paloma Hotel off Ring Road. you can watch us on Facebook YouTube and Instagram and I'll introduce my gentleman, Mr. gentleman hello everyone. thank you I want you to say a little bit about yourself to my viewers somebody watching you won't know who you are so you can introduce yourself a little bit for my viewers to know. That's uh, my name is Kingsley Ofori Apia but when it comes to the showbiz circles you call me Kojo King Right, and I'm a marketer, a writer, a blogger, and an artist manager. Wow, yeah. so we have all four, three combined together to where we'll talk about all of them right now. So, exactly. where do you come from? Okay, I come from the eastern region of Ghana, that is Achimasi. Okay. And that town, um, if I want to let it known very much, that is where Dr. Pabobo is coming from. If you know Dr. Pabobo, Wow. A highlight of legend. That is okay. his hometown. And that's where I also come from. Wow. So your school, your educational background, where you started from? Okay. I started my basic education from Achimasi. From your hometown? My hometown. Okay. Then I moved to uh, WBM Zion Secondary School. I met that is in Otafo, Achim. So all in the Eastern region? All in the Eastern region. Then I moved into Accra, then I had my tertiary education at Accra Polytechnic. Wow. That is where I offered my marketing course. Okay. So, the blogging, the marketing, and the artist manager, which one did you start first? Okay, let's say um, I started with writing. Writing. Okay, because, because of my love for the entertainment industry, I was monitoring what is going on, that is, listening to most of the entertainment shows. So that is where the passion for writing started. Okay. So, so how did it start? Okay. From uh, what stage? From what stage? As I was listening to the shows, uh, let me mention this show that is AM Plus, that is hosted by Sammy Flex. Okay, that was with me which year? That was, let's say, about five years ago. Okay. Five, four years ago. So I was an ardent listener of that show. So we keep sending in comments, submission, and we're really learning from that. So with that, I got in contact with Arnold Mensa Elevano, he's also a, a renowned pundit and a presenter. So he was having a, a talk show that is Vibes in Five. So with that, I contacted him and he approached me one day, can you do this right house for me? And I said yes. So we started with that. So when you record the shows, I will listen then. I write about it. So that is where the writing started. Do you write about movies, songs, or you write everything to get So together? what was happening is, it is an entertainment show, so they host people from all the aspects of creative arts. Okay. So movies, the music, everything. So any guest that will appear, I will listen to the interview, then I will do the writer. Oh, wow. And actually from writing, then you move to... So from writing, um, I develop. I started developing the art, so I was. I kept on writing. Then I started writing for Big Eye Media. Okay. Then I started the blogging. I entered into the blogging. Okay. But before I would write and they would publish. Okay. But now I was writing and publishing it myself. Time. So okay. I did it for uh, mm -hmm. Big Eye Media, and now GH News. Uh, remedy entertainment dot okay. com and Casapa FM online. Wow. So how many years when you started the blogging? Okay, with the blogging I can say for a year now. A year now. A year now. Okay, so we'll go for a short commercial break. When we come back we'll continue with our conversation. Stay tuned.
We are live at Coloma Hotel of Rainbow. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. If you want a place to have rest or if you want a place for parties, for conference, to rest a little bit, you can contact Paloma Hotel of Ring Road. So I want to ask, when did you start managing artists? Okay, I think uh, that is three years ago. So you started managing artists before the blogging? Yes. So what was the interest? Why did you enter into Why did you decide to manage an artist? Okay. Let's say uh, for the love of the industry, when you have the passion for the industry, all the aspects of the works, you have an interest in them. So it starts from developing contracts, contacts. So when you get the contacts and as they also see what you can also offer, then there will be that linking. So through my me following the art and getting interested in the shows and everything for sending entertainment, I made some few contacts. Then we began to grow. So through that, that is how come the artist manager. So how many artists have you managed? So it's only one that I'm still working with now. Okay. Yeah. Can you mention? So any difficulty since you started with your career, you from writing, from blogging, from artist management and your marketing, any difficulties? Yes, in every field there are difficulties and challenges, but when you have determination, when you are determined to do and you have the passion, that will subside all the difficulties and the challenges. So, in every food, I believe um, you as a host and uh, all your program, you have a challenge. Yes. But because you have the passion and the zeal to do it all the time, you make sure they have a free talk show is ongoing. So the passion and determination overcomes all the challenges. But somebody watching you might wonder, because from your writing, your blogging, your artist managing and your marketing, it's for sure. somebody will wonder, how come you combine all these? You might have challenges. How come you overcome these challenges? What are the challenges? Okay, let's start with maybe in the marketing. That is the course that I studied in school. So that is part of the, it's me. So when I come to writing, with the background of marketing, it will, it will automatically fuse in. Okay, so when I'm writing, when it gets to, let's say, um, promotion, but marketing is communication. So that will give me an in-depth knowledge on how to write. So they all work hand in hand. So I'm a marketer, then I have the passion for the arts. So when I'm uh, doing artist money, my marketing background will help me when it comes to promotion, communication, branding, and any aspect of that. So it works together. So for instance, you as a host, you have the ability to speak. So whenever you are having anything in terms of communication, naturally it will, it will come up. So that is how it is going. Yeah. So how, how, is it to, how is it to manage an artist? Is it difficult? Is it easy? Is it normal? How is it like? I would say it's difficult and it's easy at the same time. Now, you are a manager, what do you do? Make sure um, you direct, you control, you plan the affairs of the artist. So the artist knows what he or she wants. Okay, so this at this point, this is what we are doing. So we manage it together. So when there is an understanding between the artist and the manager, words become very easy. So what we have to face is the challenges out there. But within our circles, we know that what, this is what we are doing at this particular point in time. So everything will become okay. So it's easy and it's difficult. That is when there is no understanding between the artist and the manager. That is when there will be issues. Or they don't have a clear understanding of the goal, what they want to achieve. Then there will be misunderstanding and confusion. But if you know that today when we wake up, we are going to Paloma to have 
this interview. And we all understand that is what the manager needs to do, that is what the artist needs to do. There won't be any difficulty or confusion. Yeah, that's all I can say. You as a blogger, how do you, what do you do to promote artists? Is it that you only promote upcome, uh, you only promote stars, the celebrities already, or you promote upcoming artists? Okay, with me, my blogging, I believe in positivity. I believe in promotion. So when you read all the articles or the writers that I've made, when you see Kojo King, every story kind of is promoting. I don't believe in negative news. And I'm not selective that oh, uh, it's, if it's about Sarkodi or Shatawali, then I'll promote. I promote even, I find joy even promoting up and coming artists. But I also want to one day see that oh, this boy or this lady or this artist, I contributed my quota in making him become whatever he or she is now. So I don't, I'm not selective. If it is an upcoming artist, I'll promote. If it is an already made artist, I will promote. So you only promote positivity? Positivity, that is. By its very least, because in Ghana here, most of the positivity don't hide. Exactly. It's only the negativity. We only see bloggers bringing out negative. Exactly. That, way? that is a kind of misconception and an error that is happening in our industry. And I can say that um, the industry has lost the media. They have lost their priority. And they are significant. Yeah, because we know for the media, you should promote upcoming acts with positivity. Exactly. You that, but since it doesn't happen, why? Exactly. As media, we are there to promote whatever is happening within the creative industry. So, for instance, we have a lot of things that we can do to help artists. Exactly. But Rather, unfortunately, uh, we are more focusing on the trivia issues and the negative issues, all because we want uh, to have views on social media, on Facebook, and following, thinking that, oh, this is what the people want. That is wrong. When I hear people say, oh, negativity sucks, um, when you do it that way, people are interested. Yes, they will follow it, but it is not sustainable. And that is not the main reason why we are there. We are there to make sure that we promote the musician because it is a chain. It is a chain from production to promotion. So let's say um, we are producing, let's say, uh, water. Now people are in the factory, they are doing their part. Now it will run through the chain from packaging, then it will come for people to sell. Imagine those who are to sell don't do their job well. What will become of the whole company? It will fall down. So the media, a musician will wake up, go into the studio, record their songs, make sure everything is in order, then they hand it over to the media. What is left for them is also promote, so that the right people will come and buy, so that business will grow. But it's rather unfortunate that when musicians, when movie makers, actresses are doing the right things they get less promotion but when they do the negative things that is when they highlight it so it's the fault of the media and i think we when they do the negative but they get more promotion we'll go for a short commercial break when we come back we'll continue
industry as a whole? How do you see the industry? Great. The industry that is the creative arts industry in Ghana is growing very well. And I think we have to uh, give kudos to all the stakeholders, from the musicians to record labels to the media. For instance, we've been seeing exploit from the likes of Shatawali. Recently, his collaboration with uh, Beyonce on the Black Skin album was phenomenal. We can give thumbs up to um, so Stoneboy, Sir Cordier, Kwame Eugene, them. they are all doing very well. And I think they are projecting the industry to the world. We can talk of um, record labels like Lens Entertainment, coming out with PD, um, Kwame Eugene, Ms. V also passed through that they are doing their best to project the industry. So I think from where we started till now, I think it's very, very well. The artists, the individual musicians are doing their best to put. So I think the media, they need the support of the media so that we can project them to wherever we want to, to get to. So on the whole, we are doing very, very well. If, how do you think we should promote upcoming artists? How? Okay, upcoming artists, they are the people that I would say need promotion the most. Because when you begin, you need somebody that will project you for people to see you. At, the, at that stage, all they need is recognition. And a lot of them are really suffering. So we have to what? Give them our space. For instance, if an up and coming artist approaches me, I assess the talent is there. His craft is something that we can push. I think I also have to do my part as a, an industry stakeholder to what support. Because by that time, they don't even have enough money to pay what maybe I might charge, I charge them. Yeah. And they don't even have anybody supporting them. Mm -hmm. But they are supporting themselves and doing the little that they can do. So I think when they approach us, we need to at least uh, consider them so that they can also have us push them. So I think with the media, we all have to come on board and make sure that up and coming artists, we have to design programs that will push them for people to work, know them. Because every big star was once an upcoming artist and it took somebody effort towards make them know. When they are telling their stories, they tell you, I met this, with this woman, I met with this man, and he has made me who I am right now. So I think, me for instance, I do promote them. When you approach me as an upcoming artist, what I look for is your talent. If I realize that your talent is something that can be sold, or something that people can buy, you have no problem, I will push you. What if the person doesn't have the talent you are expecting, but the person has the determination? Fine. As a marketer, there should be a product that you sell. Okay. And as a marketer, I will tell you that I sell value for money. Okay. Whatever I'm selling to you must solve your need. So I can't give you something that is of less value. So when you come, the first thing should be the talent. You can have the determination. If you don't have the talent, what you need to do is to learn. Okay. Not to discourage anybody. Some people have the passion and the zeal to sing, but you realize there is no talent. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is what? go to the right quarters and learn. Because we have music schools, we have voice trainers. Go there, let them train you. With time, I believe if you really want to do that, you can get to a certain standard that will be sellable. But with me, when you come, I see that no, you have the talent. I need to make sure that what I'm going to sell to people, they will buy it. Fine. Yeah. Fine. DJs, upcoming artists are complaining DJs don't play their songs. They rather play the stars, the celebrity we have already, their song. They charge more than the upcoming can pay. My question is, do they charge the same thing with the celebrities? Okay. Every DJ is 
working for a particular radio station okay. and they also they take order okay. okay now as a DJ I also want to sell things that my listeners will buy so how does a DJ contribute his or her quota to promote upcoming artists let's say I'm an upcoming artist I don't have money I want my songs to be known and I'm competing on the same slot. I'm competing with the likes of Shatawale, Stoneboy, Sarkodie, Kwamla, MP, all of them who have great hit songs. And as a DJ, I have only an hour to play. So I need to entertain my fans or my listeners. So where am I going to fuse in their up and coming artists? So from their side, this is what they believe in. But unless maybe they have a deliberate attempt to promote up and coming artists okay um if i have one hour let me give 10 minutes for up and coming artists dj i will use that i dedicate that 10 minutes to play songs that are unknown up and coming artists so it takes the dj with such an insight to support the industry to do something like that else when they come, they have a short time, they want to entertain their fans, so they'll give them what they want. If you start playing those songs, it will uh, interest you that some of the listeners will also not be happy because they don't know the songs. So what I would tell the up-and-coming ones is that, fortunately, we have social media. Don't wait for your song to be played on a, a, a station or a DJ before you get known. You can start using the social media. Now, when the song is trending, the DJs will pick it and play. So most of them that are listening to us or watching us right now, they shouldn't only focus on uh, just contacting a DJ. DJs are not playing my song and they are complaining. No, start using social media. Most of them, it wonder you that they don't even have social media accounts. Seriously. Seriously, most of the upcoming artists, they don't have, they don't know the essence of social media, how they will share their things on WhatsApp, via so Facebook, Instagram, to, so that people will listen to them. If the song trends, recently this song, um, Ajeze did a song, yeah, quite Jerusalem, that is terrible. Yeah, exactly. He didn't take it to no radio station. It was on social media. But when it caught fire, they, oh, the radio they, they, they are playing it now. So don't sit home and say a DJ. They are also into business. Yeah. For all you know, the songs that are being played on radio, they have paid for it. Mm -hmm. They have paid him money. Okay. So if I have paid money for him to play, you think you that has not paid anything. Mm -hmm. you. So from the business aspect, they are also right. Okay. Yeah. Bloggers are always interested in celebrities' life, personal life. Why is it that? Okay. As a celebrity, you are a famous person. Whenever you appear in a public space, you get attention. So every aspect of your life is news. When we sell, people will buy. Because, let's say, Abrefi, you are also on the track to becoming a celebrity. Yeah. Because I believe in two years' time, your show will become bigger and a lot of people will recognize when you appear in any public space so the people out there those who are your fans those who adore you most of the time they want to know more about you they start asking questions oh is a refuge married who might be the husband blah 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 all these questions all these comes questions. in your mind so they might want to want to know. So it wouldn't be bad if I want to, let's say, interview a briefly and know about what is happening with her, their life aside what she does. Sure. It wouldn't be wrong. But what is happening now, okay, Shatawale is a musician. The first point is the music. The first thing that we need to sell most is the music. It becomes a problem when you rather concentrate on the other things, 
like his marriage life, his attitude, his behavior, I just can't help. then there is a problem. Although all these news, when you sell, people will buy. Yeah. But the most thing should be the music. Exactly. So as a public figure or celebrity, your life is, let's say, in the public domain. Everybody wants to know about you. They want to know more. Because with time, when they enjoy your music, they enjoy your acting, they want to know further. It's all part of the bonding. They want to relate more with you. No, we are not arguing with that. They want to know more about you. Exactly. But here lies the case. Bloggers are always interested in their personal life. They take a picture or a video and just put a, a topic that will blast everybody's mind. I just want to know the reason why. Very good. Uh, what I would say, one other challenge that I have with my colleague bloggers is that we miss the essence of what we are doing. And most of them are doing it that for their mischievous gains, their selfish gains, at the expense of the industry. So I pick on a celeb and I publish negative stuff about him. Then I get the views on my platforms. Let's say YouTube, I will get the views. Then I will cash in. I will be okay because. YouTube will pay me money. Mm -hmm. But I'm destroying a brand. Exactly. That is so, point. if I destroy Shatawale by publishing negative news, and people also buy, and I'm getting money, I am becoming richer by destroying Somebody. Shatawale. And in the long run, it will destroy the industry, and it will come back at me. Because... If Shatawale is not flourishing, if he doesn't keep continuing doing music, it means that in the long run, I will be affected because record labels won't come and support him. Investors will not come and invest in his brand. Okay. So in the long run, it will come and affect us. So what I will tell um, the bloggers is that we all have life. This is the job that we are doing irrespective of the fact that when you promote such negativity it will sell you also to be human enough and put ourselves in their shoes that is this new that i'm publishing if this person were to be my brother or sister or my friend or me if somebody publishes that same news about me will i be okay there was a time that Kwame Eugene went for an interview at BBC or CNN and they tried to search about him mm -hmm. and they found negative stories about song theft and other things and they asked him that he's used to song theft and the guy broke down it was very sad and look at exactly. look at that end and they want to find something about our, our artist and all they saw was negativity so these things wouldn't help us. And one, one funny thing is that most of our media people nowadays, most of our presenters, when they jump behind the cameras, all they are looking for is YouTube money, Facebook likes, following, numbers. But if, for instance, your show, if you are talking about important things, how we can push the industry forward. It will interest you that certain companies out there will see you that uh, with a brief talk show, they talk about the important things concerning the industry, how we can push the industry forward. So they will come and sponsor you and that you get huge sums of money. The YouTube money is just a secondary thing. We don't think about it. You just post it there. And at the end of the time, at the end of the day, if you have accrued any money, they will just send it to you. But if a presenter goes to the, the studio, sit behind the console, and all the person is thinking about is to get views on YouTube, so the line of questions they will ask the artist is the ones that would um, hurt the image of the artist. Controversial questions. 
so that people will watch, uh, come and, and watch it. That is an error. That wouldn't help our industry. I believe that when we push positivity, when you talk about the, the good things, Shatawale has, uh, Beyonce has featured Shatawale. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits that brings to our industry? If you talk about these matters, then if an investor is listening to us, they will know, okay, so this industry is lucrative. So let us what? Invest into it. But when we come and it's like entertainment, oh, this one has slapped this one. This one has uh, uh, go, go, gone naked. All these things wouldn't help us. We are in, ele in an election year. Exactly. What, what do you think the government should do to help the music industry okay. or the industry as a whole? Government has a role to play when it comes to the creative arts. And every government, when they come, they are contesting or competing for the elections. Okay. They have their plans. Okay. They come out with manifestos. Okay. This and this is what we want to do. And they have it for every sector. Okay. Now we are in the creative sector, so okay. let's come to that. For instance, this year being an election year, the political parties will come to us with a creative Ads, and tell us what they will do for us. The NDC came out with their manifesto. The MPP also came out with their manifesto. Now, one thing that our people think we are not doing right is that when they come out with the manifesto, we need to assess it, analyze it, write them down, keep it. Now, for instance, all the things that NDC has said that when they come into power, they will do for us, the creative arts. We have to keep it in record. So when they come, we have to lobby so that they do it for us. But what I see my people doing all the time is that we complain. We will complain for the whole four years. Nothing, Nothing will be done. But we have the platform. Exactly. We have the microphones. Let's say a Greek, education, health. They don't have the platform that we have. Most of them go for these um, political shows, morning shows. But we can count of about um, 60 entertainment shows in Ghana. Radio and TV. Even radio, we can count about 60. Not talk of television. So what we need to do henceforth is that we have to hold them the bull by the horn. You told us you do this for us. So now that you are in power, do it for us. We have to keep reminding them instead of complaining and everything you have to lobby. For instance, if I owe you money and you don't call me, you think I'll pay the money? Of course not. Exactly. But when you consistently call me, I'll pay. Yeah. So when I get money, those that are not giving me pressure, I won't mind them. But those who are giving me pressure, I won't mind them. Same with the government. Every government comes with a manifesto. They have your, their priorities. In economics, they will tell you scale of preference. Okay. So on the scale of preference of the government, let's say health is number one, education, number two, agric, number three, roads, number four. Where does the creative art lies? Maybe we are on number 10. And you know Ghana is a developing country. So we are operating with a limited resources. So when the government gets money, they are looking at their scale of preference. What is number one? Maybe it's health. So they push the money there. So if we sit down unconcerned and just complain, we will keep wasting four years after four years and nothing will be done for our industry. When coronavirus came in and um, we weren't going out, churches closed, most closed, pubs, cinemas, everything. Now, when the government, the presidents decided to reduce, ease the restrictions, you see that churches started working. Some of the organizations also started working. 
but now cinemas are closed, still closed, beaches, pubs, clubs. You ask yourself why. When churches, the pastors, the stakeholders of the church leaders, when they started consultation, they consulted the government, give them why they think we, the, the, the church should open. They convinced the government that when you open us, this and this and that is what we will do so that we won't spread the virus. I'm asking you, did our leaders, if we have one, we do have one. We do have one. Yes. Did they do the same? Have they consulted the government or the leaders that when you open the cinemas, this and this and this is what we are going to do. We will make sure we observe all the protocols because this is this is law. Yes. If you don't understand that it's law and you keep complaining, you complain about nothing. But what we need to do is to what? Law. So, starting with 2020, what creative arts, the media, we need to do is access all the manifesto, both NDC and NPP, because they are the two, two champions. Exactly. We, we know that definitely a winner will come out, out of, of the these team. two. The yeah. rest I can't say much about. So when one wins, either being it MPP or NDC, let's hold them accountable for the things they have promised us. We need to have an agenda and we need to set people who will lead and lobby day in, day out so that we will get our share of the national cake. We need to get people. Do you think the bloggers must come in in this case because they write, they publish everything out. So do you think they should come in in this case? When we talk about the media, we are bloggers are part of it. So whether being it a blogger, a presenter, or whatever, we just have to come as a united front. Okay, now the government keep promising and not fulfilling their promises. So now what we can do is okay. Kofi, Amma, Akuya, let's form a team to push the agenda of the creative arts so that whatever the, the government has promised us, they will get it. It's not always about being on radio and talking. It will wonder you that most of the, these um, politicians, they don't even listen to us. So when we do the talking, we are telling the masses, maybe they will be listening and they will hear but in the background, we need to reach them and let them know why they must invest in us. Wow. We have to reach them for them to know why they must help us. We'll go for a short commercial. the commercial break if it is wedding parties you are organizing have a birthday parties naming ceremony funeral events every event you are organizing please contact paloma hotel off ring road for local and continental dishes this is yabu and we're on a buffet talk show <laughs> mr ken yes 